All right, Intuitive Life Australia says, question, dating a guy, he's still on Tinder after eight weeks since meeting. I deleted mine telling him early on. Is this a reason to be concerned? Okay, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking to myself, you guys might find this interesting. I was thinking back to before we had these little devices and we had these things called laptops and computers and whatnot. And I remember when I was single dating, um, I wasn't really dating. It was Friday night. Guys, we, the guys would go out to pick up chicks, to pick up chicks, to pick up chicks. That's what we did. We went dancing to pick up chicks, see if we could get lucky. And if we got lucky, it was meant if we got laid or if we got lucky, we might meet someone to date. Now, what was interesting back then in the 80s and uh, late 80s, early 90s, was you meet someone on a Friday night, you had a really good time, and you called them up and you planned a date with them sometime during the week. Well, what was interesting was I didn't have 10,000 swipes to look through before that date. There was no there was no other options because I wasn't in the environment to meet single people. It was just, you know, what you met in that moment in time when you're at a bar. OK, or maybe it was your workplace, but that was always taboo to meet someone at work. And otherwise than that, there was no other place to meet people other than the bars back in the 70s. That's when that became more prolific, uh, prolific, excuse me. By the way, my mug says, um, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to be cherished, put up on a pedestal and taken care of. Is that my right? Is that my overinflated ego? By the way, this was a gift from a friend. <laughs> I thought it was a kind of a cute gift. Okay, coming back to this point, though, I'm making. So we now live in an environment where we start dating someone, but we have all these other perceived choices. And this is bastardizing the relationship process. It's a blessing and a curse. And the blessing is, quite frankly, I'm so old at this point in my life, I don't wanna go out Friday nights to pick up chicks. I work from home. So unless some female burglar breaks into my place and says, you know, would you like to go on a date? There's no, I'm not meeting people out in my general life. Even the YouTube followers that all profess they want to date me, you all live around the world and I have no idea who you are. So for the most part, it's through these devices that we connect with people. And this is, that's the blessing and the curse is we have this thing called perceived choice, perceived choice. In fact, it's also known as the paradox of choice, the paradox of choice. I want you to go to TED Talk. There's a TED Talk called the paradox of choice. Can someone write that in the chat box, paradox of choice? Because that's what we're experiencing today, a perceived choice or paradox of choice. And so it makes it difficult when you meet someone. And here's the hard part about dating. Sometimes, you know, right away, you don't want to invest in anyone else but them. You know, right away, I've gone on dates with women. I knew right from the get-go, you know what? I like this person. I don't want to invest in someone else. It's those tricky situations where you're kind of on the fence. It's a maybe. And the minute it's a maybe, you've got all these other options waiting for us, all these other options waiting for us. And boy, it's very hard. Chances are, if you're eight weeks in, and he's still on one of the dating apps, although I don't know how you would know he's on a dating app um, unless he actually, and by the way, I don't recommend deleting your app until you're in a fully committed relationship with someone. It's uh, So the fact is it's very common for people to stay on the apps until they know for sure they're in a fully committed relationship with someone. So this is the blessing, this is the curse. Most likely if he's not feeling like he wants to delete his app, it's because you're a maybe. Now, can maybes turn into a yes? Yeah. How many, what percentage of the time does a maybe turn into a yes? Post, post your percentage right there. How often does a maybe turn into a yes? Or how often does a maybe turn into a no or a ghosting or a disappear? I think I prefer to date when I feel enthusiastic, when I go, wow, this is the only person I want to talk to for a while, and I actually feel like hiding my profile. That's the way I think a mature, emotionally mature adult would operate. But this is the dilemma with dating, because we can feel so much uncertainty in the beginning. That's why it's such a fine line, chemistry, attraction, energetic. I mean, a lot of pieces have to fit, plus this 
this piece as well. There's a lot of moving parts, and this is why I teach you how to ask the right questions in the early stages of dating. So if you need some help with that, check out the link to a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. So bringing him back to full circle, have a chat with him. Be radically honest. Ask him about it. See how he responds, and then make a choice from there. Let me repeat that. Be radically honest with him. See how he responds, have a dialogue, and go from there. That's my invitation for you, and I hope that helps. That was a great question um, in Intuitive Life Australia, so thank you so much. Wishing you a big hug. All right.